Right, here's a crankshaft from an Enfield 500 bullet that will uh, hopefully soon be known as Asbo 38. And although I always check the crankshafts uh, when I strip the engines before I split the cranks to see what if any run out they've got and everything, more out of uh, my own curiosity than anything, I rarely if ever video them. But I thought this would be a good example to show um, where if I get any run out on these clocks when I put a crank together, I like to see it rise and fall at the same point of rotation uh, going the same way on the gauges and I've often said how one pretty much works to cancel the other out. Well here we've got a crankshaft just removed from an engine. I don't know what the crankshaft's history is um, but we've got an example of the clocks moving in opposite directions. Now as usual I've got an imperial clock here going in thousandths of an inch and aught to the five is five thousandths of an inch and that's my metric clock, uh, obviously going in millimetres and tenths of. And from the naught to the ten is one tenth of a millimetre, which is about four thousandths of an inch. So the movement of the needles roughly equates to uh, equal amounts of thousandths of an inch, actually. There's not a lot in it. And anyway, if I start off here, we're just past the bottom dead centre position of the crank and we've got both clocks showing zero but as I start to rotate the clock uh, sorry rotate the crank you see now that the needles start to move on the gauges but unfortunately they move in opposite directions one is rising from the zero and one is dropping from the zero and what that means is in real terms we've got that one dropping just over two thousandths of an inch actually if we we kind we'll say two thousandths of an inch now that one has climbed the equivalent of about three thousandths of an inch but uh, where if they'd moved in the same direction at the same time they'd pretty much cancel each other out because they're going in opposite directions you actually really in real terms have to add one to the other so at its worst point there which is actually about mid-stroke there, we have got, like I say, if we're kind, we'll say two thousandths of an inch on that one, and three on that one. Add them together, you've got an overall run out of five thousandths of an inch at those points of the main shafts as the crank rotates. So uh, that's a bit more than you'd want, really. And you can actually see, or I can see at least, if you look on the main shafts, you can see where there's been a little bit of fretting from the inner races of the main bearings on the main shaft. It's just put a bit of a shine on it. It hasn't actually really worn into it. It would be quite usable again. But I'm hoping that when I put this back together after I've lightened it, that I'll get better figures than that, hopefully. And if there is any rise and fall, I'll be aiming to get the needles rising and falling at the same points of rotation as we go. So, but there's an example of run out and slightly excessive run out at that and hopefully like I say we'll see better than that when this crank is put back together after I've lightened it and rebalanced it and fitted whatever conrod and big end options we may be fitting but that's ready for me to split now I've weighed it and uh, this one is 10.4 kilograms all up in weight and I'll be taking off a total of about a kilogram maybe a whisker more in overall weight of this um, if things go to plan.